All right, so I'm in India and I've been looking at different schools, different college campuses, and this is the one. Welcome to the new oh, startup college. We need to get a new, new signage. This was Prudence International School. And it is now the headquarters of Mr. Business. I'm not Mr. Beast, I am Mr. Business. I'm finally doing YouTube. You know, when I took shrooms, I realized that the most power you could ever gain, you know, we all have this urge to like do better in life. And I realized that the biggest, best path that you could do is just being like a fucking like angel or whatever, just helping people. That is the greatest power is empowerment of others. And since then I've had a lot of visions and plans and things that I've started and I never have enough time to actually devote to them. And so, I started thinking about how can I get other people onto this path? And I think it's a much better path. I think there's lots of talks of the failure of our institutions to actually deliver people to these exponential paths. So I thought to myself, well, what if we made a college that was exponential? What if it was based on you building a startup? Not only can I pay you a full salary to go to this college, but I can help you build it because I'll have ownership inside of it. And obviously doing that in America, paying a full salary is different than doing that in India, which is why I'm in India. But doing it on a campus is just a vibe. It's just learning, growth. We've got a mess hall over here. Lots of land, so building like sports area is a definite. And I think it's going to be interesting. I'd like to do a ton of fucking projects to really, really shake up the world in a positive way. And fuck, man. I just can't believe it's becoming real. It's pretty cool. Like, you can really just do shit. You know? I used to be sad, but then I realized I could just do shit. Then I got happy. And that was a while ago. I was depressed when I was like 18, when I was trying to figure out life and shit. And then I did get a little bit more depressed when I just like optimized building. Like I want to do so much good that I'm willing to suffer for good. Some of you might've seen like my basement experiment. Where I locked myself in the basement of this house I was paying $20,000 a month for. It was an absolute waste to be living in a five foot by five foot concrete box and spending that money. And my judgment call on that was silly. I wanted to do good and I thought extra clout was gonna help me do that. But I realized that that is not the right way to do it. Same thing with like, at one point I wanted to do an OnlyFans business, like hire a ton of people, help manage the girls. And like, that was also short-sighted. Glad I didn't end up going with that. Cause it's like, yeah, I wanted to earn that money in order to do more good. That was my mindset, but it's the way you do it, right? You can't use bad karma to get good karma. That's an absolute law. So lots of learning, lots of growth, lots of vibing. I think of a Venn diagram where one side says impact and the other side says fun. And I realized that the middle of that was storytelling and doing content and just having a fuck ton of fun, being a jester of a vision for the future. Cause I do, and if you know me, you know this, I am very much just fucking thinking about where we're going, how can I help? What is, what is my purpose, you know? Like, I used to think it was a curse to have so much existential dread where I'm like, I'm a meat suit on a fucking rock and a carbon unit and I can just talk to other people like, what do I do? And then I started looking at that as like, something I'm grateful for. I am so grateful to be at a time where my actions can disrupt the course of the future in a positive way. And the disruption in a positive way is purely based on that suffering existing. I couldn't find my light without darkness existing. So that was my way of finding gratitude for it rather than having this nihilistic view of like, there has to be no God because there's gratuitous evil. 
I think gratuitous evil doesn't actually exist. Look into the definition of that if you don't know gratuitous evil. You cannot believe in God and gratuitous evil. That is an absolute fact. The very definition of gratuitous evil is not believing in God. And I know I go on a lot of tangents. I didn't plan this video or script any of it. Sort of was just like, I should film an update of my life and whipped out my phone. And then I just really want to explain myself. I definitely have a, a want to be understood because I live a very interesting life that from the outside and from my Instagram, there's definitely like a false narrative of who I am now, I guess, and all my thoughts. And I failed to update that and that's fine because I've had to just focus on getting to a place where I felt that that was worth focusing on. And so this is my candid video. You can probably expect a lot more in the future coming out of edited ones. I am flying a small media team out here. The kills the start. He's got our shirt on that we made. Scrolling kills it's dreams. True. Marlboro effect. There we are, boys and girls. And then we got a Got some more stuff in the works already. We're gonna be launching an empowerment algorithm app, the search for the dankest vibe, the best video every day. Blowing that up, all of the ideas that I have require more attention. And rather than having to pay for the attention, I'm hoping to start to garner the attention source myself by hacking virality on these short form platforms like we saw Top G do. Who at the end of the day, I'm not saying I respect that motherfucker, what I'm saying is that I respect the fact that he went viral and think that we need more influences in the world to at least have a purpose and not just drinking and flexing and shit. Doing interesting shit. Positive masculinity. No reason to talk about negative masculinity. Just focus on what is positive masculinity and embody that. I think he's a top G, but he's not a top V. Top vibes is a different scale. He's too focused on like, you know, the cigars, alcohol, women aspect. Not top V. We go monk mode out here. I'm thinking about, you know, really making this like, when you're here, this is, we're doing 75 hard. Maybe it's 365 hard. You know, there's only like 5,555 waking hours in a year. So if you think about it that way, if you're like, can I spend five, 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 five hours, 5,555 hours going hard on my fucking goals. Ask yourself that, spend a year doing that, you will literally completely change your life. It's all about aligning your dopamine system. Like we all wanna do shit and we feel unmotivated. And I think in culture, a lot of people say like, oh, don't try to chase motivation or whatever. Use willpower, that's so wrong. If you understand how to create motivation, you create a non-burnout effect of being able to vibe. How do you do that? You understand that your body is always optimizing a risk reward system, which is based on dopamine divided by calories. Now your mind can change the amount of expected dopamine you get from activities through your belief system. This is why manifestation is becoming very popular. It's not like you're magically actually changing the world, you're changing your beliefs and yes, your beliefs are changing the way that you operate in physical reality. You are timeline shifting your own life. You're surfing at every moment and painting a new stroke on the canvas of the story of who you are and who you were prior to the singularity. Now, I talk about that a lot because I think it's also something that is important for other people to hear is the rate at which AI is changing things and there are even websites which are built to be collective prediction mechanisms, as we all know from those experiments where a hundred people guess how many gumballs are in that thing. The average of that is actually very accurate. Collective people are very smart. And so they have predictions of when is AGI gonna happen? This is also referred to as the singularity and this is when computers are as smart as humans. And so, that prediction is weak AGI by, I believe, 2028 or something, like ridiculous, and then full AGI by 
think the most recent one was 237. Could be wrong, but go to Metaculus, the website, in order to fact check, verify, read more about it. Because this is going to affect your life. Uh, basically, if you do believe in that narrative, and if you really want to hear a good insight on that, read the book, The Singularity is Near by Ray Kurzweil, then you could completely change how you're living. Like, completely. This AI-generated photos, just the beginning. We're going to have text to video real soon. A lot of the stuff I'm going to be focusing on here is on utilizing AI. And I've been thinking a lot about, you know, what, what does it look like for a positive global narrative to form. And I've made some writings, done some things. And I'd just like to say, I'm grateful to be here. I'm happy to be here. It's gonna be an interesting story, an interesting ride. And I'm uh, very happy to, to be taking it.